Hello, today we're going to talk about people in the landscape. So this is the uh, project we're going to work on today and you can see I've got a crowd of people and uh, some buildings in the background and the, um, we're going to first of all, before we start on these, this composition, we're going to practice drawing some, um, some people and uh, but before I take this away I just want you to look at the composition and if you can see the heads of everybody in this crowd are on the same level. Obviously their feet aren't on the same level but it's quite important if you can get the heads all on the same level, particularly if you've got a fairly flat street. So we haven't got any hills going up on this street. So I'll put that aside for the moment and then uh, the reason I suggest you do it on a piece of scrap paper first is um, we, we can practice the figures. So what you'll need is a fairly small brush and this one I've got uh, is I uh, think an 8. It's good and then you take some colour and I'm just going to use a colour called neutral tint here but um, it's as it says on the, on the name it's a neutral tint but if you haven't got neutral tint it's fine to use Payne's grey. Bit of that in the palette there. And take some water. Now, when you're painting people, paint fairly freely. And what I usually say to my students is don't paint people, paint carrots. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a shape that's like this. Okay? Uh, that's okay, your body shape. And then what we're going to do is to put in the legs. And importantly, uh, don't put the big shoes on the bottom. So, so it's fine if you can get it to uh, go off to a point. Or if you want, you can actually take a little bit of paper and dab that bit out. That gives an impression of movement. Then what you do is you put in the arms and then the last thing you put in is your head. Good. So there you've got a guy walking along the street. Now the reason I suggest you start with the body and not the head is if you draw the head first and then you do it too big What you've got then is a body with a head that's too big and what you should have is your head should be an eighth the size so this should be your head it should be uh, the eighth the size of the rest of your body so you put the rest of the body in here and the legs in here that, those should be the proportions you need. And you can see on this one that the head is too big. So if you put your head in at the end, make sure you paint it quite small because you can always make it bigger. But once you've done a very large head like this, especially in this dark colour, it's going to be quite difficult to make it smaller. So that's what you need. So let's have another play around. Let's add um, of a different colour. Okay, so now we've got the guy, he's coming towards us this time. And then we put his head on the top and give him some arms and give him a bag. Okay, so you can see he's come towards us and we'll let that dry because I've got a colour here and this is called Naples Yellow and this is a colour that's opaque. So I can use this to put on top of this dark brown to give him a face but I do have to wait until it's dry. Uh, let's take a colour. Here. 
it. So nice lady there walking there with him. And you can even give her a little dog. Dark. Take a bit of the colour out. Don't paint, don't have to paint too definitely. Uh, just need to give an idea and that shape there by her feet will say dog. Now we're going to give her a lead but we don't want to draw a straight line so it's got to be very narrow and let's just draw it in one place so we don't have to link it. We don't have to have one straight line from her hand to the collar of the dog which is actually a little bit off but that doesn't matter. Good so you can then you can see I've got the heads all in one line and let's say then we're going to paint another figure but in the background so here's somebody else okay but his head is on the same level but his feet are not so he's in the background Okay, this guy's walking. Okay, good that works. And uh, right, so he's still not quite dry that um, uh, guy. So I'm um, just gonna pause for a moment while I dry off the brown guy. Okay, you can see he's dry now, so I'm gonna take this Naples yellow which is opaque and mix it a little bit and all I'm going to do is quite thick enough too much water on the brush what I'm going to do is give it a face you see? And that works because it's an opaque colour, so I can paint it over the top of the dark brown. So the next step, so I suggest you just get back yourself a piece of scrap paper. This is something that I've already painted on, and um, just have a play around with your figures. So what we're going to do now is going to draw out the composition and I've chosen to do a square composition um, this time so you find this is a square it's 19 by 19 centimeters uh, which once you put it in the um, in the matting board uh, will go very nicely into a frame that's 30 by 30 centimeters so a standard frame let's move that onto one side and I'm going to draw out the composition on a piece of uh, just normal printer paper but what um, I'm going to do is I'm going to press on quite hard so you'll be able to see the lines when we do it on the watercolour paper we're not actually going to do it quite so uh, so dark so I'll put that in front of me so I've got some little bit of inspiration there okay and I'm going to start with this guy here and just draw him out very roughly. You don't need to do any more than that. And I'm going to have another one here. I'm going to have one here. And this guy is actually walking. And then I'm going to have one here. You can see how basically all I'm doing is this shape for their bodies and then adding a um, head on top. I've got a couple here. This guy's wearing a suit. And a lady here who's with him. And now I've got the main six main figures in and then you can start adding uh, the figures in the background. Okay, that's about, about, that's 
about what I want. I hope you can see that. I hope I've drawn it uh, dark enough. I've used a B pencil for that. Uh, I've sketched out really quickly. I only want to show where the figures are in relationship to everything else. This guy's a bit weird. I think he needs a... He needs to be a little bit bigger. Good. So if we take... Uh, before I move on, here's the frame I've chosen to paint in. And you can see I've marked this line. And this line is... This is about 8 centimetres here. So it's a little bit above your centre line, but you can see that the heads are all more or less on the same level. Move it to one side and you can see here uh, is one I've already sketched out and you can see how I've, um, I staple my paper to the board. So all you need to do is to take your paper, throw it into the sink for five, ten minutes until it's very wet, very floppy, put it on your board and staple it on. It's quite important that you get a board that is quite thick and uh, the wood is also quite important. Uh, one of my students bought a board with the, made of MDF and it was so solid that the staples wouldn't go into it. So this is actually, I think it's poplar or something like that. But uh, So it has to be quite thick, about half a centimetre thick, and it does have to be wood, not a composite wood. So what we're going to do now is look at the colours. So, um, the colours are, because I've chosen, let me move that out of the way, the colours I've chosen for this composition are, as usual, a uh, yellow, a red and a blue, and uh, there's not going to be an awful lot of blue in this composition, or people's clothing, but there's, there's only a very small area of sky up here. Um, and... Um, the yellow is actually uh, yellow ochre. Uh, it's not a colour I normally would use. I would normally use a raw sienna, but it's quite difficult getting paint at the moment. And the raw sienna that came was the brand that I don't normally use. And it's a bit more orange than the raw sienna I usually use. And this red is uh, a madder, but you can use a lizarine uh, if you wish. So as usual, we take the... Let me use this paint. As you will use, we take the colours and mix them together. Okay, I'm going to use some of the buildings will be this colour. Some of the buildings will be that colour. Some of people's clothing. And put my... This is my neutral tint. This is a, quite a good colour for people. You find if you look at crowds of people, most of them wear uh, jeans or t-shirts that are um, jean coloured. So this is the, going to be a very useful colour for my people. I think that's, that's going to work. So just to recap, the three colours I'm using are um, yellow ochre or raw sienna, um, madder or alizarin, uh, the blue is cobalt. Cobalt is quite a nice sort of mid-tone blue, but you're not going to have much blue anyway, so it's... Um, but I would perhaps avoid ultramarine. Ultramarine's got a little bit too much red in it. And uh, this is a neutral tint or Payne's grey. Clean up the stuff we've got. And let's start with this guy here. I'm going to start with the people first. You don't have to do that. You could start with the background first. But the people are going to be the most difficult part of your composition. And psychologically, if you've got them done first, 
before you start the background, then uh, you know, you're halfway there. Whereas if you've painted a fantastic background and then think, oh, now I've got to paint my people in, that's going to be a bit more, more difficult. Okay, here we go. Here's this guy here. And he's The first one in, and the next one. Let's try this one here with the. Okay. Notice I'm stopping their legs quite quite high up. I'm not painting right down to the bottom. The lady is going to have a white top. She's got a red skirt on and she's got a white top. And the white top will come out later. And then while we've got her there, we're just going to put her legs in. So I'm not putting in many of the heads yet. Put those in later. And don't worry if it blends around, blends in. That's actually quite nice. This guy is also going to have a trousers a bit too broad. Oh, he's in a hurry. So that's fine for the moment and let's just add some shadows in. So the sun is coming from this area here but the buildings are quite high up here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a shadow here. Shadows. The shadows are quite handy because we can get some nice um, horizontal lines going through using these shadows. Right, good. I think that's good for the moment. What I'm going to do is dry that out off and then we'll move on to the next stage. Good, okay, so our people are dry now and what I want to do is to go back to the sketch and put in the rest of the landscape. So what I'm going to do, it's a street scene with a market, so I'm going to put in some umbrellas.
And um, I'm going to put this building in here. Careful when you put your building, don't have it coming off so it's coming off right at the corner. And there's some stalls here where people are selling things. Now, look at the umbrellas. The umbrellas is cheating. This is me cheating. And you can see they're going to be white and you can see they go right the way across the painting from one side to the next. That means that this area here is going to be easy to paint that shape there and this area here underneath the umbrellas is going to be easier to paint so that's what I call a little bit of cheating so what we've got now here is some buildings here and some perspective don't oh this is going to be the background don't overly worry too much about your And then we've got another building coming in here with a little window here and we've got this section down here. So we're going to have a lot of a wide area here where everybody is uh, walking around. Okay, so I hope you can see that. And I have already um, painted much lighter. I've drawn out the sketch on on here and so now we're going to start with a bit of sky and I paint with something underneath my board uh, if you don't have one of these odd little things uh, you can use your um, masking tape or just something so there is a couple of centimeters up so it just makes your your board so it's sloping a little bit more and um right paper to test the paint because i really don't want this blue to be very dark so in we go painting that area there and then maybe a little bit darker at the top the sky your sky will always get darker um, further towards, it will get lighter as it comes towards the uh, horizon. And don't worry if the blue comes a little bit into this building, that's fine. So what I want to do now is I'm going to do the other buildings in this sort of yellowy colour, but that's a little, so water in your palette, that's a little bit bright, a little bit away, and knock it back it's a little bit too bright. That's the colour I want. Now, um, I don't know if you can see that palette. I haven't made enough. I'm going to paint the whole of this area and I do want to make sure that there's enough and I haven't got enough there. So a bit more paint is needed. And I'll swap to my bigger brush. a little bit of the neutral tint to mark it back and that's not a bad colour. And when you come down get down to your umbrellas they're going to be white so and then when we get onto this building here this is also going to be this color. umbrella. Good, great. Uh, a little bit darker here. A little bit darker as we get to into the umbrellas. Uh, don't forget the light is coming from the top of your building so it's going to be slightly lighter than it's going to be here. Oh, good. I'm not unhappy with that. That's working okay. And then before we finish, I want this one to be quite dark here. You'll 
notice how I haven't painted it all the same colour all the way down so it's warmer at the top gets darker as it gets towards the shadows at the bottom okay so what we're going to do now is dry this off again and then I'm going to paint this middle section here so just give me a few minutes while I dry so it's now dry and what I'm going to do now is to paint this area in here and I'm going to paint it this way up. Paint it the way you feel comfortable but as going around the heads is going to be more difficult than drawing along, of the, uh, along the underside of the umbrellas, I'm going to go around the heads and uh, we're going to have it quite dark. really nice to leave the umbrella yeah. not sure what you call it bits of the umbrella then. Around and we'll see what we've got. Okay, so you can see very clearly I've got the umbrella shapes and everything that's going on behind them. And you can see also that I've painted different colours as it goes along. So don't paint it all in the same colour. Good, so while we're here, we can paint in very roughly the windows here. And all details.
too dark. Okay, that adds some three dimension to your words. And we'll carry on now working on the heads of the people. So let's give this guy this guy here. If you can leave a bit of white on the top, it's a good thing. If you can't, it doesn't matter. I'll show you how to add a little bit of white um, later. Okay, this guy here is holding a jacket. And this lady here has got some buttons on her. This is my face colour. Details to add. So we're almost finished with this scene now, so I'm just going to dry it off again and then we'll put in the final details. Good, we're into the finishing off stage now, so I just want to give this guy um, a face. And see how this colour uh, works very well. It just covers over any of the dark paint that's underneath. Give that person a face. A couple of these people faces here. Okay, that's good. And we'll have a little bit of toothbrush work on the bottom. We're almost at the stage where we're just going to put it on one side. And uh, look at it for a while.
details. What you can also do, which is quite nice, is in this dark area we've got here, take some tissue. Take some clean water and another person at the back. Let's add somebody else here. Just add some. Look, look, quite a lot of people now. We've got quite a large crowd. Okay, so uh, this now is going to be put somewhere where I can watch it, uh, look at it for a couple of days and see what else needs to be added to it. So if we put on our frame, go. A village market crowd scene. Thank you for listening and don't forget if you'd like to have a go at this composition please uh, take a photograph of it and send it to me. Uh, several of you have done this already and we've had some good discussions about the previous projects. So bye for now and keep painting.